Hey riders, Eric Lang with Rod Adventures here, gonna comment on what appears to be a new bike being announced by BMW, the F900GS. So let's take a closer look. Okay, so I haven't actually seen the F900GS in person yet, but a couple of quick highlights I want to point out and a couple of things I'm not sure I like so much about it, but um, not to go through all the specs on the entire bike, there'll be plenty of videos talking about all that for you and you can read and listen to your heart's content. A few things that I like so far from what I can see in the specs on this bike and everything is that first of all, it took a 14 kilogram, roughly a 31 or 32 pound weight reduction, getting it down under that 500 pound mark. So the F850 GS was slightly over, which was kind of interesting because then BMW had two bikes in that 500 plus pound GS category. So now they've got one back in that middleweight. So down around 482 pounds. With the current demand for middleweight bikes in the market, I think it was a good move that uh, BMW got something back into that sub 500 pound category. Another factor that looks good on this bike is a fully adjustable suspension. So great. If you take the time to do it and make those adjustments, you're going to be making yourself more likely in, in the perfect setup and arrangement for your changing riding conditions. It's when suspension is not adjustable that we just tend to sort of deal with it the way that it is. And that's okay too. We can adjust our bodies and how we're riding to how the suspension and everything is set, but having adjustable suspension from, it's going to be a nice feature for a lot of people to really get the most out of their bike, the best performance handling and safety. And speaking of, it looks like there's a dynamic ESA electronic suspension adjustment option available with an upgrade from BMW. So that instead of actually having to play around with making clickers move and things like that, actually just electronically touching buttons to change your preload and dampening and, and, and uh, compression and things like that can make a real difference again and making it more likely that you're going to be adjusting your suspension to match the situation that you're into or getting into. And another thing I like about this bike is that it comes with some pretty nice exhaust to begin with. And I'm gonna pronounce it just like they told me in Slovenia, a Krapovic. I hope I got that right. It's gonna sound great, it's gonna be light, it's gonna probably stay a lot cooler and be less uh, hot to touch um, than most stock exhausts are. So great that it comes with nice aftermarket, well, OEM I guess in this case, but sort of aftermarket as well. So nice job there. Couple things I don't like so much about this bike from what I can see in the specs is that it's still with the 21 inch front and 17 inch rear. I love 21 inch fronts, but a 17 rear to me, I just feel like it should be an 18. I don't like that much of a contrast between the front and the rear. Not the end of the world. Previous bikes have done it and it'll work out okay, but I would just rather see an 18 inch rear wheel um, to sort of go better with that 21 inch front. Looks also like BMW pumped up the compression ratio. You're right up at 13 to one, which is gonna mean that's part of how they got so much power out of this engine. It's gonna mean that it's part of how it's got such great fuel economy. They're talking about over 60 miles a gallon, but a 13 to one compression ratio in certain fuel types, mm, not so great. For the longevity of the bike and how long the engine is gonna last, okay, well, it's pretty high performance and out of a high performance engine, you might not expect huge um, longevity in terms of total use before needing a full overhaul and maintenance. But you know, 13 to one is really getting up there. And so um, think about that. If you're gonna be traveling to places where higher quality fuels that can handle such um, compression are gonna be available or not, probably not not a big issue. BMW has got the software and technology to take care of that. But um, I would just maybe rather see something like 12 to one, keep it a little more simple and longer lasting. The last thing I noticed is that this bike is again, a stressed member engine or stressed member chassis design, which we're seeing a little bit more uh, often these days. We've got Honda CB500X, great adventure bike, stressed member engine, Yamaha Tenere 700, great bike again, stressed member engine. And so now this F900 GS is the same design, that stressed member engine, which is part of how they were able to get below 500 pounds again, getting it down to 482 or whatever. But the reason I sort of put this in the not so great category of things to see on this bike is just that the pounding that we put adventure bikes through, it might demand that we have a more traditional chassis design instead of depending on the engine as part of the chassis. All that load bearing, all that pounding, you know, people, I know we've been doing it for years. Motorcycles have had stressed member engines for a long time and they have their place and they're great for reducing weight. Or is there really going to be a 
structure there, again, meant for longevity and taking the occasional pounding, hitting some rocks, whatever skid plate is going to go on there. Is it going to be able to, you know, hold up and take some pounding, you know, as the bike comes naked from the factory or looks almost naked from the pictures I can see that there's not much of a skid plate or anything down there. You're really exposed up front there. So some kind of protection is going to be necessary. But again, is that protection, a skid plate going to be in a position that it can withstand um, the, the impacts it's taking without a traditional chassis behind it to help support and, and keep the bike safe and keep you up and riding. So anyway, just a few quick short thoughts. Again, um, there's specs all over. Other people are going to give you every little detail about the bike from the, you know, LED lights and the software packages and all that kind of stuff. I just wanted to point out just those basic three highlights or a few highlights that I think are good about the bike and a few things that I didn't think, you know, Great that it's under 500 pounds. Is that worth it with the stress member chassis design? Um, I'm not sure. We're going to find out, though. Once we get our paws on these bikes, we'll be letting you know more. So let us know what you think about the new F900 GS. Are you going to get one? Thanks for watching, everyone. See ya.